Hi, so these are just some random thoughts on a project, a little pet project of mine that I've been working on, and I'm still right in the middle of it, so this is going to be a bit raw, a bit fresh. I've been up till 4 a.m. on this, but I finally cracked it. And that is, say we have just a, a software renderer, which is a, a like running in Vulkan, so it's a well-implemented draw program, and the only thing it does is if you write to a buffer, sorry, if you write to an array, it'll upload the array to the screen. That's the only thing it does, but it does it very well. Um, the problem I've been working on is how do we represent color formats? Or how do we send custom data to set an individual pixel? So typically what I would do is I would use an unsigned integer format and then I would use a combination of bit shifts to um, combine numbers together to add up to a single 32-bit integer. But um, Vulkan doesn't like this. And the reason, I don't know why it doesn't like it, but um, it says that the color format should be floating point, even though everywhere I've specified it as unsigned integer. I guess because the swap chain is floating point. Anyway, so so that's out of the question. Unsigned integer is out of the question. And this problem sort of reminds me of the time I was a kid and I got a CRT monitor and I had just a, a voltage prod and I was prodding the cable trying to work out which, like, which of these, which of these pins is the red pin? <laughs> I would do that. Um, yeah, because, okay, so I'd look at this and I'd say, okay, well, this is a, sort of a floating point representation. So for our color buffer, should we use floats? Now I tried using a float and setting data, but it looked essentially random, probably because I was hitting um, various, various overflows and things, which was essentially setting the data randomly, but I'll stop rambling Here's the answer, spoiler alert, it's unsigned character. So an unsigned character is a byte with no formatting applied. It's just a straight number, byte, binary data. So let's say we wanna set everything to red. <clears throat> well, for 32 bit, that would be four bytes. So we push on, good spot. We set on um, the first byte, and this is RGBA. And there we have it. That's full red. So then, well, was that a fluke? What happens if we go 4-4, four, four, for instance? That should be a darker red. Yep, it is. Okay. And then, just to check it's not a fluke, we can set the other components as well. So it's between 0 and 255, basically. So this will be green, there we have it, and blue, so now this should be teal. Nice, and this is actually the color that I got as a kid if I set <laughs> several pins at the same time, um, but this, that's not how electronics work. So yeah, there we have it. This has just been a little discussion on setting colors for if you ever want to upload your own data to a, a texture in Vulkan. Um, I don't know why I was up till 4am to work this out. A lot of it was just writing the implementation, but um, sometimes you get in that stubborn mode and you, you don't see the other tracks to complete a problem. Um, so while we're here, just in terms of implementation, currently this is running at, um, yeah, about, 3,000 frames per second, which is good, but I reckon I can probably make it a little bit faster. The workload here is, like I said, I'm just doing this in the straightforward way first, and then I'll work on the optimizations. The workload here is we grab an image, and then we reset its command buffer and record a bunch of draw commands on it. 
but the bunch of draw commands that we're recording are as so. We begin the command buffer, and then we begin a bunch of work on that command buffer. Now what that work is doing, a lot of, the, a lot of these um, info structs are pre-populated because they're not going to change. What we do is we basically mem copy into a staging buffer, transition the um, texture that we're writing to into a, a transfer mode, then copy the staging buffer over to it, and then transition that um, into a shader mode. And then we begin the render pass. Now it's really important that these um, jobs are done before the render pass begins because we can't have a, a texture copy running at the same time as a render pass. But this is the optimization that I'm thinking. Do we even need a render pass? At the moment, I've got a shader, which is just, well, it's just writing to a dummy quad. And that's the old way. But if we have a look here at the engine, this is my whole point. So we have this render pass, it begins, it draws its thing. But then if we look at the render function, so we submit a command buffer, and then we present something to the screen. And when we present to the screen, we tell it exactly which image index to present to the screen. So this is my, this is my thesis for the next part, is what if instead of using a render pass, we just skip the render pass completely, and also instead of using a color buffer texture, we just copy directly into the swap chain image and then present it. I mean, that, that could be fast if we avoid the render pass. But anyway, um, so those are just my thoughts and specifically around the color format. I know this is a little bit all over the place, but I've just, I've been up late, but I cracked it. Anyway, so I hope you have fun and um, see you again soon. Bye.